he had people pay him up to twenty five hundred dollars for that album. He ended up making like one hundred fifty thousand in sales in the first week off that album. You know, the album streaming wise didn't really do anything spectacular like LaRussell. Well, he hadn't put out a studio project of work. Like yeah. he was doing like, you know, recording outside live, live shows. Like he would, everything, I swear to God, every time this man put put his lips to a mic, he records it and he sells it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it don't matter what it is. You know what I mean? Everything's for sale. Every, everything's for sale, right? And that's great. You know what I mean? But he, up until that point of his explosion, he hadn't put out like a studio body of work. Mm. You know what I mean? And so at the time... I knew of a platform called Even. So Even is was a brand new platform that hadn't even launched yet. You know what I mean? Um, we ended up launching the platform with LaRussell as the first drop. But I knew they had built this platform to sell music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because they knew that direct-to-consumer was about to come back. Yeah. So they had built this platform to sell music. Um, and, and, of course, sell music and access, right, to, to the artist. And so I told LaRussell, I said, yo, I know some people. I think you should talk to them. You know what I mean? So I connected them. And... Um, he was selling, he was selling, what do you call, uh, shares of his music yeah. already. Like he was already, like he was already about that life just to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. He's already about that life. So all, all I did was connect him with a platform to help him continue to do what he was already doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So his community was well primed. It ain't like this is, oh, I'm all of a sudden out of nowhere going to sell y'all something. They had been purchasing from him. Yeah. So he had already built a strong fan base that was used to supporting him in that way. You know what I mean? But this was just his first studio body of work. Um, and long story short, we, we connected with Eve and we put it together. Um, and we dropped, we dropped the project on Eve and, a week, I want to say a week before it dropped on DSPs, before it streamed. You know what I mean? And so over that week span, I want to say the first day he sold a thousand copies by like the second day he was at 2,500 copies and in total ended up selling 4,000 copies. Um, but he had already come up with this structure called, you know, pay what you want. Yep. Um, and so basically what that means is you can give me $10, you can give me $100, you can give me $2,500, whatever you feel like this art is worth to you. That's what I'll accept. You know what I mean? Pay me what you want for this art. Um, and man, it's freaking brilliant. You know what I mean? Because La Russell's so special because it's not just about music. He stands on values. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when I tell artists, when you, when you say something, everybody says they're independent and they love independent. They want to be independent. But saying it and actually doing it in practice is two different things. And so everything he had been doing up to that point was the practice of selling his art versus streaming. You know what I mean? And so that ended up paying off big time because he had people pay him up to $2,500 for that album. He ended up making like 150000 in sales in the first week off that album. You know, the album streaming-wise didn't really do anything spectacular. He was on the charts and stuff like that because he had become a name at that point. But nothing comparable to the one week of sales he did with that project. And he turned around and sold another one like three weeks later, that that did like twenty thousand the first week or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, it, I mean that dude is phenomenal, man. That's an important thing yeah. though, because like we talk about it all the time, looking at all these different metrics that artists go by. And you just said like it didn't do crazy streaming. I think currently his monthly listens are somewhere in like three hundred thousand, three, yeah, or three four hundred thousand. Yeah. His name and the marketing behemoth he is. Yeah, you know I like it. Larissa, you are a marketing hey. behemoth. I like that. I like that. Hey, he, I yeah. mean, he and he's someone who truly has a media company. Yeah, right? exactly. And how, how he's moving, he's able to do numbers and connect with people and make that amount of money. Yeah. Who's making that much, much money from streaming? Not a lot of artists. Not a lot of artists. Not, a, a not, not 150 a week. Especially not indie. Not that, yeah. All right, especially indie. Yeah. You, the ones who are doing those numbers still got to bust it down to yeah. somebody else so it takes i don't know how many it's probably artists with 100 million streams that are, are barely making that kind of money no they they definitely not man they definitely not but i mean i think that he's opening the door for all artists to be able to do that you know what i mean yeah. like he's a big catalyst in the direct to consumer coming back yeah. um you know because that's that's what cds were Right. You know what I mean? Um, you, Ten dollars now. Of course, even back then, unless you were independent, you weren't getting the bulk of that. Um, but now it's space for everybody to be independent. And so, even if you go out and sell your album for ten dollars, bro, you're making way more than you'll make on streaming by yeah, far. That's true. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so, even if just ten dollars an album sell, you're making way more. What are kind of like the first 
couple of things you start building towards with the arts in terms of being able to make revenue back? Well, you you always got to start with that that limited. You know what I mean? You always have to start there because if you don't have you know a strong fan base in your building and you get your your first hundred fans in your community, like you get your first hundred people on Discord, um, and obviously you got to be active with it because you can have a hundred people and only thirty show up, mm-hmm. but that that comes because you aren't active. You know what I mean? So if you're active inside that hundred person community and you have majority of them showing up. I can sell you 10 things. Yeah. I can say, hey, man, you know, there's only 10 of these. You know what I'm saying? I'm selling them for $20. And you just condition them to understand, like, I need y'all support. And they, they'll they be very happy because they want to be like, I was here first. Yeah. Like, this was her first drop. You know what I'm saying? Like, And so it's just about it's just about keeping it limited and keeping it important to you. Because you can't just put your, your logo on a shirt and call it merch. You know what I mean? Like, you got to show them, like, this means something to me. Because that's, that's the only way it'll mean something to them. You know what I mean? So just thinking like, you know, what what really matters to me? What 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 do I identify with that I that I can make, you know, a, a product? You know what I mean? And then let me let me this month I'm gonna sell 10, next month I may sell 20. Mm-hmm. Community grows, okay, now I, now I sell 100 of them. Um and this could be literally how you pay your bills. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like because I'm on selling a limited number, I don't have to sell this t-shirt for what People are used to buying, used to paying twenty, but I can sell it for a lot more because they know like this. This is this is super important. I'm not just selling you a t-shirt. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yep. the importance and the values that you put on the product is going to grow the price of it. So some artists and managers are just waiting for lucky moments when the ones who are killing it have systems to consistently take artists to another level over and over again. And if you want to see what that looks like, we just did a collab where we not only show the system that we use that's resulted in billboard hits, some of the biggest viral moments on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, but also we got JR McKee to break down how he took an artist from zero to one of the biggest hit songs of 2022 and getting a Grammy in January of 2023. This is recent stuff, not old tactics. If you want to check it out, go to www dot brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Don't forget the WWW or it won't work because JR gets into the details of looking at the data, decisions that got made, how much content got created and how they adjusted the content over time for different parts of the campaign. This is real behind the curtains type of stuff. So again, go to www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Grammy. If you want to check this out and apply it to yourself, back to the video. And that's the crazy part about it. you said a lot of a lot of things, right? Because you talked about his audience was prime for it. Yeah. So we built a relationship that we can exchange in this way. You're used yeah. to paying me money for things. Maybe yeah. Not a certain amount, but at least you're used to paying me five dollars at a time. You right. Know that I need to be supported, and all the messaging that requires someone to be used to selling from uh, buying from you, you already had to establish. So his. His, his, his relationship was there, but then his message, you go back to them values, they're very yeah. strong, very clear, and he repeats them yeah. over and over. And he stands and on, he practices them. Mm-hmm. I asked when they say stand on, it's like he, he, he did it in practical ways. He's not just saying it. Mm-hmm. You see him practically doing it. He's practicing what he's preaching. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's that's why, you know, he, he gets resonated with so well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, like we shift it from this is the only way you can get this music, right? The CDs, albums, and all that stuff. The streaming, music is free. But now, it's not the only way you can get this music, but people want to yeah. access the music through things where we pay you money. Yeah. Uh, the music is free, but we want to, but now we're doing it by choice, which means you definitely have to give us a reason to do it. Right. There you go. There you go. You're absolutely right about that. Uh, it's an interesting landscape, man, but I think that's going to be... I always say... There's these artists that feel like I wish it was like, let's just say the 90s or whatever. Well, they didn't have to create all this content, da, 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 da. But Man. it's like, well, if you look at the 2000s, you look at the, the 90s, every single era, there is an, an artist that has a gripe with the way it's, the way it's done. That era, right? Yeah. And every era lends towards artists who might be naturally more strong in a certain skill set. You might be crazy writing game or back in the day, the ones who could sing, sing, sing. Yeah. Right. Advantage versus the ones who are now like auto tune and they can't sing. Right. Yeah. So there's every era has its own advantages. It Music isn't supposed to win in one specific way or another. That's just the era. That doesn't yeah. have anything to do anything. Yeah. It's like I said, you got, you got to make it shake. You got, you yeah. got to do you got to do what you have to do. You know what I mean? If, if this is what you want, then this is what you have to do. 
you know and mm-hmm. so that's just that just is what it is man and yeah. so but i i think exactly like no matter what era you were in if you're the type of person who's complaining about content you would have been complaining about touring you would have been complaining about doing radio shows yeah, so you would have found like something Trump. to complain about yeah. you know what i mean that's that's just part of the mentality that's why you have to change your mindset if you want to win yeah like and it's so funny when you go through enough history you always see a lot of these elements at work right i was listening to the audiobook of will smith's book maybe mm-hmm. back in like earlier last year or something and him and Jesse jeff were doing this thing where there was a phone line mm-hmm. where people would call in and they were paying something like a dollar a minute or, or yeah or something and maybe it was more expensive after that but it, he was making like ten thousand dollars a day because people called to hear their voicemail so like you know will wasn't actually on the line but they would have yeah. like a message that they would leave for their fans and we're going wow. on our tour and hey this is an update of how we're and you just giving them this thing to tap into yeah all that's stuff I, I i like that um there's actually some a way you can do that now really so there's there's a company called logcast l-o-g cast logcast and they have a partnership with spotify mm. and so basically you can Set up a subscription, okay. you know what I mean? Um, so if they were paying a dollar per message, you know, you can charge a, a dollar subscription, however you want to do it. You can charge whatever you want, but it's subscription based, right? And what you can do is you can leave those voice notes in order to upload to Spotify immediately. Mm. You know what I mean? And so, you know, to upload a song to Spotify takes two, three days, yeah. but the voice notes upload immediately. Mm. And so the same way they can come to your Spotify page and see your music, they can also come to your Spotify page and see the voice notes. And you can charge whatever you want. You can make it free if you want, but you can charge whatever you want. So it's, you can basically run that same play through Logcast and Spotify. So, yeah. but but the way you just explained it gave me a great idea of how I can have my artists input because I, I see the tool. I just didn't know the best way to implement it, yeah. and that's a really good way. Yeah, that's cr- that one point you just made because all these tools out there. Yeah, but how do you use the tools? And yeah, I like a lot of the artists on the come up. The the indie artists. I feel like they get inundated with all these new right, tools. all these different and things. You feel like I gotta use this one, I gotta use this one. Don't fall for all of their marketing, <laughs> man. Like find the ones that you can figure out a way to make sense for yeah. you, and then leave it on the table if it don't make sense at the moment. Right. Uh, yeah. 